husbands, if you're not married. Number two, this talks about doing right, doing the right thing according to the word of God. That's what we do as daughters of Sarah. Number three, we are not fearful. God has not given us a spirit of fear, a power, love, and sound mind. Who's who we, that's who we are. We are not fearful. We do what is right. We do not let anything terrify us. We do not give way to hysterical fears. And number four, we have emotional control. We don't let anxieties unnerve us. That's who we are. So I want you to repeat after me. As a daughter of Sarah, daughter of Sarah I, will I will obey God, obey God and, authority. and authority. I will do right. I will, do right. I, will fearful, I will not be fearful, but have emotional control. Have emotional control. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's just pray. Father God, we just thank you so much. We thank you for what you've started already in our hearts and our lives. As we're about to go into your word briefly, we thank you, Holy Spirit, you speak through me. It will be none of me and all of you. Pray that hearts will be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Just briefly, again, really want to whet our appetites, our appetites. You know how when you go to a restaurant, the first thing they give is the appetizer? So think of this as the appetizer. Okay, before the main entree comes in. Praise the Lord. So I want you to kind of just enlarge yourself. You know, appetite makes you want more, right? So you can want more today. So because I'm believing God, I pray. I said, God, this conference here will be a, not like any other conference. This conference here, you will have an encounter with the Lord, and this conference will be as a point of reference. You can go back and put in your diary. It was on November the 9th. 2019 at 4350 Kenworth Avenue, Highestville 20781, Jubilee Christian Church, a daughter of Sarah Conference, that this happened to me. Amen? Amen. When you have an encounter with the Lord, you remember. Yes. You remember. You don't forget. No one has to come and remind you. You know because you have an encounter. So that's why I'm here to say enlarge your heart. Amen? God wants to deposit something mighty in our lives. Amen? Because there's so much in God that God wants to give to us. There's so much depth that God has for us. So I want us to just prepare ourselves and know that we are going to live here, you know, change, and God is going to do something that's going to have a lasting impact. Amen? Not something that's going to be just for a week. You know, how was the conference? Oh, it was great. And la next week, you know, someone asked you, how was the conference last week? Uh, what, what conference? Oh, you mean that conference? No, no, no. You will remember a year from now. Oh, I remember. Two years. Oh, I remember. Amen? Amen. 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 That's what we are going to experience today. Amen. What you expect is what you experience. Amen. Amen? So let us have expectation that's very high. And our God is able to do exceedingly above Above all that we can ask or even think. So the theme is knowing Jesus personally. Knowing Jesus personally. I'm going to leave the rest breaking down all limitations for our guest minister. But I want to just focus on knowing Jesus personally briefly. Um, let's look at John chapter 10 verse 14. This is where this theme came from. It's John chapter 10 verse 14 because God wants us to know him. I mean, how many of you have a child and you don't want your child to know you? That is ridiculous. If you have a child and the child will not know you, you not know your child. That is ridiculous. That is irresponsible. So, and we know our God is responsible, amen? But we have to make sure we're also responsible in return by learning to know him. So it says in John chapter 10, verse 14, amplify, I am the good shepherd, Jesus is saying, and I know without any doubt those who are my own. So we know he knows us. It's clear. Right? It says, I am the good shepherd, and I know without any doubt those who are my own. And this is where we're going. Daughters of Sarah, 2019. And my own know me. And my own know, this is his expectation. And my own know me. And have a deep, deep, not superficial, a deep, a deep personal, not a group not a family, personal relationship with me. That is his expectation. He wants us to have a deep, and he has to be a personal, a knowledge, a knowing of who he is. We must know him for ourselves, and that's why we are here, and God will give us understanding in Jesus' mighty name. And he's now helping us to understand the relationship that he has with his own father as an example for us to follow in the next verse, verse 15. Now he's comparing his relationship with his father. Now, as the Father knows me, the Father knows him. He said, as the Father knows me, this is Jesus speaking, even so I know the Father reciprocated. I know the Father. You understand that? So the Father knows Jesus. Jesus knows the Father. Jesus knows us. He also expects us to what? Know him. know him. 
Now let's understand the interaction between the two of them. And he says, because I know the Father, I do what? I lay down my life for the sheep. Because I know the Father, I will do whatever he asks me to do. Because I know the Father. I have a personal knowledge. I'm not doing because someone else is telling me to do it. Amen? Amen. So when you're serving God, God wants us to know why we are serving him. When you know why, when you know who you're serving, serving him becomes easy. It's, not, it's no longer a chore. We will not have to beg you and, and push you and pull you. To pray will not be a chore. To come to his house will not be a chore because you know him. And because he knows the father, he can do what his father said to do. Verse 16. Now he's explaining. Verse 16. And, and, um, but we can do it that way. Um, KJV, please. Okay, let's move to 17. Therefore, that my father loved me because I laid down my life that I might take it again. Because I sacrifice. I do what he tells me to do. He loves me automatically. Oh, what eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. The things that God has prepared for them who love him. So us obeying and knowing him is actually for our own good. Because all the miracles and the blessings that he has for us. So number one thing I want us to get as a nugget this morning is that I must know Jesus personally. I, the emphasis is I must know him personally. Number two things, two points I want us to get this morning. I want us to look at John chapter 14 verse 7. John chapter 14 verse 7. There's so much secrets in knowing who God is. There's so much secret in knowing who God is. We're going to read uh, John chapter 14. Verse 7 through verse 9. Now, Jesus Christ now is speaking to the disciples. He said, if you had really known me, again, he's talking about this whole knowledge. If you had known me, if you had really, so you can kind of know him, you can kind of really know him. If you had really known me, you would also have known my father, known my father also. You also would have known my father also. From now on, you know him and have seen him. There are some things that we have to know when we know him. When you know him, automatically you should know the Father. In, in actuality, what he's saying is that when you know me, you have unlimited access to the Father. If you know me, you will also have known the Father. From now on, you know him and have seen him. So in essence, when you see Jesus, you have access to the Father. And who is the father, by the way? We are talking about this father who, who is the, the omniscient one, who is the omnipotent one, who is the omnipresent one, the one who has no beginning, the one who has no end. You understand who we're talking about here? The one who is ageless, the one who's changeless, the one who's dieless, the one who doesn't sleep or slumber, who cannot lie. I want this to get in our spirit. The one who keeps his promises. The one who says, dear me, is there anything too hard for me to do? Amen. The one who says, you know, Sarah is like <laughs> laughing. And God is like, do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? I have no beginning. I have no end. I am unquestionable. Who can question? Who can say, God, you did wrong? Who can correct him? This is the one we have access to. So enlarge our mind. God is saying that if Jesus said, if you know me, you have access. If you know me, you have access to the unlimited one. Do you understand? That's who we have access to. We're talking about knowing him. When we know him, when we know him, we will not be moved. You will not be shaken. What is it that God cannot do? What is it that is impossible when you have God on your side? Do you understand what I'm saying? We're talking about knowing him. When you know him, you walk with so much confidence. Do you know who I just said, you know, the omniscient one? Yes. Who, you know, his kingdom reigns forever. It's not like a king who reigns now. You know, think about the civilizations that came and Rome, Rome came and left. Yes. You know, they're coming and go. They're coming and go. They're coming and go. A generation comes, a generation goes. This one doesn't go. Yes. He's the one who was, the one who is, the one is to come. He's the I am that I am. Yes. He's not going anywhere. When we look at Genesis, before Genesis, he existed. He was there before the beginning. So if you know, this is if you have known me. Can we just know him, daughters of Sarah? He said, know me. Know me. Know me. Nothing can move you. He is able to create anything. 
what is it that God cannot do if we know him? So I'm going to challenge us this morning as we're getting ready to get the word. Let us cry, God, I want to know you. He's so deep, deep calls unto the deep. God, I want to know you the, from the depth of me. I want my depth to call unto you. Amen? Amen. And he's like, I want you to know me. He delights in us actually knowing him. He's just saying, you, you have to come. He's not going to force us. If you're willing, you have to be willing and be obedient. Amen? Amen. So number two thing is, we really want to know him. We will know that we have access to the unlimited one. Amen. Now, one thing about knowledge is, you know, Jesus Christ said is, you know, wants us to have a deep relationship. So knowing God is in depth, is in level, is in degrees, right? Is in degrees, right? You can know level one, level two, level three, level four, right? So I want to just quickly show us two examples of people in the word of God, in the Old Testament, New Testament. Who help us to, uh, who, I guess, helps to demonstrate this whole degree thing, how that knowing God is in degrees? We're going to talk about Moses. We all agree that Moses has some encounter with the Lord, amen? amen. When we look at Exodus chapter 33, verse 13. Let's just quickly read Exodus chapter 33, verse 13. We can read KJV. And if, just to give you a little background, this point here, Jesus, I mean, Moses already had an encounter with the burning bush, had an encounter with the Lord, you know, went to Egypt, all the miracles that took place, brought them from Egypt, the Red Sea, stretching the rod, the sea parted, because all the things that happened through the wilderness, all that God did, preserving them, all the encounters, you've seen the great hand of God, you've seen the ground open, you've seen miracles. After you've seen all of this, and then you're going to make this prayer point. Now he's, look at the prayer point. In our time, if someone experiences a tenth of what he experienced, ah, I know God. Don't you know where I am? The Red Sea, just the Red Sea. There, there was, in fact, it happened 20 years ago. They were still referring to the Red Sea. What has the Lord done since 20 years ago? They're still referring to the Red Sea. But look at this. But, but you know what was, why Moses was able to do this, though? Because God had a testimony of him there. But all the men on the face of the earth, there was none as meek. There was none as meek. That's why he was able to say this. He didn't get. Now, therefore, I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, if I have found but grace in your sight, Show me now your way that I may know you. That I may know you. I may know you. After interceding on behalf of the Israelites, he's still saying, I want to know more. There's more. There's more. There's more. There's more. So we are here today because we are saying, God, there's more. We want more. Amen? Let's look at Paul, New Testament. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. Paul wrote this while he was in prison. This is during, um, so this is why I'm in prison. He has done so many, you know, miracles. The Lord has done so many exploits through him, miracles. He was stoned. He thought he was dead. The Lord rose and he came back to life. I mean, the healings that took place, you know, the, the salvation, so many souls that were saved, the, the, the missionary journey. The, the establishment of churches, that I may know him. After all of that, that I may know him. So quickly, a few minutes we have left. Four benefits of knowing God. I want us to get hungry tonight. I want you to get hungry, thirsty. I want to know you. I want to know you for myself. I don't want to know about other people's testimony. No, 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 me, myself. Number one, when you have a personal knowledge of God, you have supernatural and unique encounters. Supernatural and unique encounters. God is not respected of whether you're male or you're female, your background, gender notwithstanding. I'm going to take this out of John chapter 20. This is a story. It just really amazes me. Mary Magdalene. Her, we know what her lifestyle was before when the Lord cleansed her. 
I mean, when God does things for you, you know, it changes your perception. You're, you're forever grateful, especially when the Lord brings you that from low, brings you up. Look at this woman. She experienced something that even the disciples who had walked with him, who were the men, right, the men, did not have an experience. John chapter 20, verse 11. John chapter 20, verse 11. We're going to read quickly because of time. John chapter 20, verse 11, KJV is fine. But Mary stood, this is after Jesus Christ, you know, they died, um, was buried. And so they, she came to the tomb. Mary, Mary came, Mary stood outside by the tomb, weeping, you know, because of the death of Jesus. And she wept. She stooped down and looked into the tomb, verse 12. Verse 12, and she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. Verse 13, then they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to him, to them, because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Verse 14, now when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. Verse 15, Jesus said to her, Woman, why art thou weeping? Whom are you seeking? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Verse 16, Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Rabboni, which is say teacher. 17, Jesus said to her, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father and to my God and your God. And lastly, verse 18, Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. Do you know I really believe God broke protocol for her? protocol was broken. He wasn't supposed to have interacted with any person. He was supposed to just, you know, be resurrected and go back to heaven. But because of somebody who had knowledge, who was hungry, who was in pursuit, he pretty much, she pretty much interrupted with heaven's protocol and plan. We were talking about when we know him, there are some things that God would do. She had angelic visitation and she had a messianic visitation. She was the very first person that had an encounter with Jesus. Not even the disciples, the men. She was the one who actually went up being the one to send the message that he is risen. So you see, irrespective of your background, if you would just know him and be in person and just sit at his feet, there's nothing that God would not do. Unique supernatural encounters from the place of wanting to know him more. Amen? Amen? Amen. Are we being blessed? Yes. Second, second point, benefit, number two. Daniel 11:32. Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. We are talking about benefits of knowing him personally. Those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flattery. But the people who know their God, the people who know, you see that know again? If you know your God, if you know your God, if you have a known what God can do, you will be strong and you will carry out, you will do exploits. Exploits, meaning you will do things that have never been done before. Things that are supernatural. Things that man has nothing to do with. That's what God is saying. So you see why we should desire to know him more? You know, imagine walking around in a classroom on campus and people are just falling out. And people are crying around you, giving their life to Christ. That is exploits. You, you know, you, you go somewhere and people are crying because somebody is sick and you just walk in the room and they get delivered right away. You just go to the hospital, you know, a mental illness hospital, psychiatric psychiatric hospital, you go in there and everybody there who's on uh, medication comes back and in their right mind. That's what you're doing exploits. You see what I mean by doing exploits? And God wants to do it. God wants to do it. All he's saying is, I'm just looking for vessel. I'm just looking for usable vessels. I'm looking for somebody who really knows me. Amen? Number three, when we know him, we will have peace that passes all human understanding. We'll be unshakable. Because we know that he is in control, he is in charge. We, we will know according to Romans 8.32, but all 8.28, Romans 8.28, that all things will work together for good. You will know that. It says, and we know 
How do we know? We know that. That no is because we know him. And we know that. Why? Because we know him. We know that because we know him, that all things will work together for our good. It comes from a place of knowing him, and that gives you a blessed assurance that he's in charge. Amen? And then lastly, number four, joy. Joy, our joy before, irrespective of the circumstances that's going around us. When we know him, we will have unlimited joy. Because it says in John chapter 16, verse 24, John chapter 16, verse 24, it says, Unto now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive that what? That your joy will be what? That your joy will be? So that's what he's telling us. You know, it's saying if you know me, if you ask me, because you have a relationship with me, if you ask me, I will give to you. So we have access to joy. We have access not just to joy, but full joy. That our joy will be full. We will not have a shortage of joy. See all these benefits? So do we want to know him more? So we said, you know, the key to it is meekness, right? So while you're sitting there right now, I just want us to cry to the Lord over the next three minutes and say, God, I want to know you. Open my eyes, my heart, my spirit to know you. Create in me a passion, a desire to know you. Let it create a longing in me to know you. So let's begin to pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, individually we have come to you right now that you create a thirst in each and every one of us as we prepare our hearts. We enlarge our heart, oh God. We ask that you open our eyes, open our ears, our spirit. Give us a desire, a deep thirst within us to want to know you, to know you more, God. We cry that we'll know you. We will know you personally. We want to have a deep interaction, deep interaction deep knowledge of who you, who you are. We don't want to go off of other people's testimony. We want to go off of experiences, personal encounters. We want to have supernatural experiences, supernatural encounters with you in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, we are just believing you that, oh Lord, you do a new beginning. There'll be a new beginning for us even this day in the mighty name of Jesus. Take us deeper. We want to go a deeper realm, a deeper realm, a deeper realm, a deeper realm with you. Take us deeper in you, God. Create a longing within each and every one of us us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We are expecting and we believe, oh God, that our lives will not remain the same because you will show us more of you in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 We give God glory, honor, and praise. So are you ready today? Yes. Oh, did you have announcements you wanted to share? So I'll let uh, our, can we just give God glory if you receive a word? Were you all blessed? Did you receive something from there? So I will have you, okay, yeah. Wow, praise the Lord. Praise God for that appetizer. You know how when you go to a restaurant, you're really hungry and you order appetizer, but it's so big and you just end up having two entrees? So that was the first entree. So <laughs> we're going to get ready for the second entree pretty soon. Um, any first timers? Anybody here for the first time? Um, just to let you know, thank God for your life. Pray that you're blessed. Um, our restrooms are um, right here in the corner. And we do have ushers in the back. Our ushers, raise your hand. If you haven't received an agenda, um, please let one of them know and they'll bring you one. And um, if you flip the other side, there's an evaluation form. If you could fill that out as well before you leave so we can know, uh, we can get some feedback so we know how to improve next time. So we're about to really get started for our second entree. You know, the good thing about spiritual food, you can never get full. You can never have too much. There's not too many calories or nothing like that. So having two entrees is just fine today, okay? All right, so we're going to really get started. Let's welcome our Pastor Ranty back up to introduce our guest speaker. Are you ready? Just give me one second here. That's what happens with technology. You can't always rely on it. Should have had a hard copy backup plan. I am going to find it. Um. 
well. So, um, it is well. <laughs> I'm looking for the bio of our guest minister. I wanted to read it, but then technology decides to do its own thing. But I know her name. And I know she's a daughter of the Most High God. <laughs> and, um, and she's a pastor in, uh, of a Kingdom Kids Ministries. And all the way from Tulsa, Oklahoma, can we just give a lovely hallelujah, daughter Sarah, welcome to Pastor Natasha Byrams. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, that's perfect because it's not about me anyway. Perfect. Let's give the Lord a high praise for what he's already done that's about to manifest. He's already done it. It's just going to manifest in this place. A high praise. Come on, a high praise. We worship. We exalt you. We magnify you. We give you your due praise, oh God, for you alone are worthy. You are mighty to save, mighty to deliver, mighty to heal. We've come with expectation, but before we do anything, we acknowledge you as great deliverer. Our I am, oh Lord, even as we sung, Lord, we acknowledge, oh Lord, that there is none like you. No one like you. You are mighty. You are awesome. Come on, give him a high praise. It opens up the heavens. Your praise opens up the realms. Come on. We worship because we meet business today, right? Jesus, Jesus. Oh, why did you stop? Why did you stop? Come on, he's receiving it. He's inhaling it. Oh, Brenda Lebosaye. We worship, we worship. You praise until you can't stop. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's deliverance that happens just when you clap. There's deliverance that happens just when you say, thank you, Lord. 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 We worship. We exalt you. There is none like you. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be magnified, to be glorified. Jesus. Oh, we worship your name, Jesus. Let's pray. Father, you have heard the prayers that have gone forth from the members of this house, from those who have organized this time, even though you ordained it, they organized it. You have heard the prayers, you have heard the petitions, you have heard the cries, you have seen their fastings. And so we invite your Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you, Holy Spirit, to have your way in our midst, to speak to our hearts, to shake us up, to challenge us, to wake us up. That all the limitations, oh Lord, that have hindered you from having sweet communion with us would be removed in the name of Jesus. This is not another conference. God doesn't have time to waste. He doesn't have time to waste. He is on purpose. And he's doing a thing. And when he has ordained and called it a solemn assembly, it is because he wants to release something. He wants to impart something. So we must align ourselves with him. So Father, we pray that chains break, that yokes break, that mindsets shift, that this blah feeling that we walk around with all the time, this whatever about you, Lord, it would be cleansed from us, oh Lord. This lethargicness, oh Lord, we ask that you would cleanse from us heaviness, depressions, oppressions would be broken off of our lives, Jesus. Lord, that you would remove the veils that we might be able to see. That you would open up our ears. 
ears that we might be able to hear. And this would be a time with you where we lose track of time. You take us into a moment in eternity where you speak directly into our spirit. Directly into our spirit. Directly into our spirit. Do it, Jesus. Oh, we need you, Jesus. Oh, we pull on you. We pull on you. We pull on your grace. Pull on you. Come on, just activate your faith. Jesus, Jesus. It is you that we need. It is you that we need. It is you that we need. Oh, there's a place he wants yes, to take us yes, to. Yes. You hear better in that place. You receive better if you shift it to that place of faith. Come on. Jesus, come up higher. You need to come up higher to receive. Come on, come up higher. Shake off the attitude. Shake it off. Stop looking at a person and look to him. God, we need more. Come on, come on. I'm trying to get your hearts to open, 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 open. We pray for more. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You're almost there. More. Tell him I ask for more. I need more. I need more. God, we need more. Tell him, tell him, tell him. Let's pray together. More. We pray for more. Oh, we need more. more. Jesus. God, we need more. We need more. We need more. We need more. Just lift your hands to you. Thank you, Father, for what you're downloading into our spirits, into our hearts. We stay in line with you, hearing your voice being guided by your presence, that your will be done. Let us feel the force of your kingdom, the strength of your kingdom, the life of your kingdom. Jesus, let it be so. Let it be so. That your will be touched in every heart, every life. You know where each person is. Reach them. Reach them. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You may be seated in his presence. I want to thank Pastor Ranti for having me. It's an honor and a privilege to be with you. We were just at Proclaim. Was anybody at Proclaim? I know Justin yeah. was at. <laughs> so um, God is so good, and I'm just so honored to um, finally come to know you. You know we've been one all this time. We've been one family. We just haven't met each other. So when I met your pastor, it was like we've known each other forever. Same spirit, same heart. And so I'm just honored to be here. And now we're family, so you won't be able to get rid of us. I just want you to know. We can be annoying. 
okay? And so I bring you greetings from Kingdom Keys Ministries from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, Jesus, pray for Tulsa, y'all. You got to be called to Tulsa. But I bring you greetings from our church, from my family, from our church family. We have two of um, two people that have been just such an integral part of our church family. Pastor Tanya is here with me. She's Miss Evangelist. It's a chore traveling with her. So she's, she's ministering to everybody in the bathroom. And to, I'm just, oh, Tanya. So um, the Lord is just really moving on her life. It's, in, it's, it's awesome to have her. And then Minister Osi, I know some of you may already know Minister Osi. If we had more time, I'd let her just flow. And, you know, there's, there's, there's power in the, the right sound. The right sound. The Bible says that when a spirit came on Saul, that David began to play and it drove that spirit off. And so much, sometimes it's not just the word. Sometimes it's the right sound that you need to begin to shift you into a place of freedom and into a place of deliverance. And so there's so many different ways. And I want you to take God out of a box. He's too big for that. Because he will mess up your program. He'll mess up your agenda and say, I don't want to do it that way. I'm going to do it this way. But he knows exactly what you need. Amen. So I honor Pastor Renty and her husband and, and the awesome work that you're doing here. I feel the presence of the Lord here. You can't say that for every house, you know, for every church. But the Lord is here. So we're going to go right into the word. I'm going to set my timer because, you know, I want to stay in order. Thank you, Jesus. So the first five minutes didn't count. That was, that was, I was getting y'all ready. All right. Thank you, Jesus. <sighs> Praise the Lord. We are going to come out of Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. And as uh, Pastor Ranti said, the theme is knowing Jesus personally. And I think she really honed in on the desire of the Father to know us. I'm going to focus on removing the limitations, the things that hinder us. How many people want to know the Father? You don't think you're too young, do you? Okay. Um, it, it is his heart to know you. David was only 16 when he slew Goliath. And from that moment on, ministry started for him. 16. And so you are here today. The Lord wants to impart life to you and shift you to another place of purpose and vision for your life. Amen. So we are going to talk about the things that hinder us from really coming into communion with the Lord. And we know that that is very possible when we look at John chapter 4. And I'm going to lay a foundation for where we're going. But when we look at John chapter 4, Jesus comes to the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. And they're having a dialogue. And the Samaritan woman says to Jesus, yeah, we worship here at this mountain. But you Jews say that we're supposed to worship in Jerusalem. You know what Jesus says to her? You worship. Now, she, she's expecting the Messiah. She's expecting everything that the Jews are expecting. But Jesus said to her, you worship what you do not know. That is the state of many Christians today. We worship based on what we've been taught. We worship based on what we've come out of. We worship out of tradition. We worship out of denominational things that have been passed down to us, but we don't know him. She said to him, if you knew who was asking you, who was talking to you right now, so you worship me, you come to this mountain all the time in my name, but now I'm standing face to face with you and you don't recognize me. You don't even sense me. You worship what you don't know. And if you knew who you were talking to, you would ask me for water. You would ask me for life. 
And the reason we don't ask is because we don't see him. And the reason we don't pull on him is because we don't know him. Or we know him right here, but we don't have a revelation. Having a revelation of who Jesus is is different from having a teaching about Jesus. Anybody can teach you something but it is the spirit of God that has to open up your spirit and let your spirit see him and today we want to see him and we will Matthew chapter 13 we will start at verse 1 On the same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea and great multitudes were gathered together to him so that he got into a boat and sat and the whole multitude stood on the shore. Then he spoke many things to them in parables saying, behold, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, I'm going to read fast because it's a long text. And as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And the disciples came and said to him, why do you speak to them in parables? Why are you always giving these stories and illustrations? He answered and said to them, because it has been given to you, know, to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For whoever has, to him more will be given, and he will have abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Therefore, I speak to them in parables, because seeing, they do not see. Hearing, they do not hear, nor do they understand. And in them, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, hearing you will hear and shall not understand, seeing you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of this people have grown dull. When your heart has grown dull, you won't hear, you won't receive. Their ears are hard of hearing and their e eyes have been closed. Lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears. Lest they should understand with their hearts and turn so that I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. Say my eyes are, my ears are blessed. My eyes are blessed. I can see and I can hear. For surely I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desired to see what you see. And did not see it and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. Therefore, hear the parable. I'm going to break this parable down for you. So Jesus draws them away from the masses and then he begins to break down the word for them. The masses did not get this. The masses did not get what you're getting right now. And he said... When anyone hears the word of the kingdom... And does not understand it. So the seed that is being sown is the word of God. Jesus says, I'm speaking. I'm sowing seed. And the seed that is being sown is the word of God. And there are different kinds of hearers here today. Everybody doesn't hear the same way. Everybody's not receiving the same way. Everybody's not receiving at the same capacity because we're talking about getting to know Jesus and getting to know Jesus is directly related to your capacity to receive from him. You don't get to know Jesus just by studying. You have to be able to receive life. In him was life, and that life was what? The light of men. So if you can receive life, it turns on the light inside of you, and you can see more. So your capacity to be able to receive is directly related to how much you can know God. If you have a small capacity, you have small communion. If you have a big capacity, to be able to receive life, 
then you have increased your capacity to be able to know him. He said, the words that I speak to you, they are what? Spirit and they are life. I'm not talking like everybody else talks. When I talk to you, it goes straight to your heart and to your spirit. But when I come to your heart and to your spirit, I am assessing how you will receive me. Can you receive me? What do you do with even the word that is going forth now? The words that are going forth now because they are his word, they're spirit. They're alive. My word is alive and it's dealing with you. And so he is explaining here. Now, these are the different kinds of hearts. Four different kinds. And you're going to fall into one of these categories. And I want you to find out which category you fall into because that determines what you need. It determines if you need deliverance. It determines if you need healing. It determines if you need circumcision. Gets to explain to them, and we're going to break this down. Are you excited? Don't you want to know, man, how, do, how, how, how am I engaging with you? Because sometimes we don't see ourselves the way he sees us. Okay? When anyone hears the word, verse 19. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who receives seed by the wayside. But he who received the seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. These are the amen people. These are the people that say, preach, pastor. Take your time, pastor. Take your time. Receives it with joy. They're all excited. Yet they have no root in themselves, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. But he who receives seed on good ground, say good ground. Everybody right now is not good ground. I'm just going to tell you so that we can get that out of the way. But you will be. One of the main things that hinders us from receiving is denial. As soon as we accept, Father, I need, I need, I need some changing. That's when we begin to begin to experience deliverance. Got to be honest. Got to be real with him. I think you guys say keeping it 100, something like that. You know, I'm trying to stay with the young folks. But he who receives seed on good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some 60, some 30. So let's talk about this. Let's break this down just a little bit. Okay? Let's break this down just a little bit. Let's talk about the first ground. Let's talk about the first ground. Jesus talked about four different kinds of hearts, four different kinds of people who interact with him interact with his word. Now, we don't see Jesus physically, but he said that he is the word. John chapter one, verse one says, in the beginning was what? The word. And the word was, and the word was, okay. So when you are engaging with the word, you are engaging with God. Come on, shift your mind. Don't get common with it. Don't think that this is another just church service. Adjust yourself because God is speaking to me. God is speaking to me. I'm engaging with God. Okay? So he is the word. And when the word comes forth, he wants to begin to illuminate us. He wants to give us understanding. And so now the word is going to go. And the Bible says that when the word is released, it will accomplish what God wants it to accomplish. Now, if Jesus is the word, think about this. And the father releases the word. 
releases the spirit of Christ in your life. Jesus refuses to go back to the father and say, I couldn't do it. Run into some trouble. He's going to run into some issues. Wayside ground. The wayside ground is the ground where people walk all the time. If you're going to plant seed, you're not going to plant seed necessarily on a, on, 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 uh, in an area where people are, there's going to be high traffic. Because if there's high traffic, what's going to happen? As soon as that thing tries to come up, people are going to step all over it. So because this is a high traffic area, it's a place where people trod. It's a trodden down place on people's feet. That ground becomes hard. Okay, so Jesus takes the word and relates it to seed. And he says, when I take my word and I release it to that kind of heart, it just stays on the surface. It can't go in because the heart is hardened. Why is the heart hardened? Why is that that ground hardened? Because it's been walked on by people. It's been walked on by people. You've experienced some things. Some people have hurt you. Some people have done some things. Some of us have been touched. Some of us have been molested. Some of us have been rejected. Some of us have been abandoned. And people have walked on us. And so the heart now holds on to the issues that we've been through. And so we come and we're hearing the word of God, but the heart can't receive it because all the heart knows is pain. Because this is the ground. This is the heart that people have been walking on. Life has been hell. Since I was a child, I've been going through. I've known nothing but rejection, nothing but abandonment, nothing but hurt. And so you're sitting in service right now and you're hearing the word. It's touching the surface. It's touching the surface, but it's not taking any root. It's not getting past your pain. Your pain is your God. Your past is your God. The people who have walked on you, your memories, and you live by facts instead of truth. You know there's a difference between facts and truth, right? I've taught this before. So facts is what... You can see with your observable eyes what you can say, this happened to me. The fact can be that, yes, you were touched. Yes, you were molested. Fact is, dad left. Fact is, mother treated me wrong. Fact is, I was not, I was not loved as a child. You can see those things. You experience those things. Truth is God's perspective on facts. Truth is above facts. So facts will say, you were molested, so how can God love you? Truth will say, I have called you my own. When father and mother abandon you and leave you, I will call you my own. Facts will say, you failed in your past. You're just messed up. Look at what you did. Look at what you didn't do. Truth will say, you are more than a conqueror. Truth operates above facts. But many of us live our lives a hardened heart, that first kind of heart. All it knows is what it's seen, what it experienced. And God is bigger than your experiences. God is bigger than your past. Oh, he means business today. He does. He doesn't want you stuck in this place. So the Bible says now, with this hardened heart, look at what it says. So this pain, this ground is so hard that the, the, the sower sows the seed, it stays on, and then the birds, like vultures, swoop down and take it, eat up the seeds. And birds in scripture repre represent demonic forces. So let's make this picture. You've been hurt all your life. 
You come to church, you hear the truth, Jesus loves you, but facts say you can't be loved. Your mama left you, your daddy left you. How can you possibly be loved? So your heart is wrestling, it doesn't open up. So the truth of God's word stays on the surface. So now a demon, a spirit of rejection comes and snatches from you. So before you leave these doors, you leave with nothing. So Pastor Ranty is up here saying, you will know that on November 9th, the Lord meant you. But if you have a hardened heart and you do not ex uh, um, admit that that is where you are, you will leave and you will forget this day because you cannot hold on to anything. The spirit of rejection will snatch it from you. The spirit of fear will take it from you. The spirit of abandon, whatever spirit that you are wrestling with, those vultures are literally hovering right now. Hoping that you do what you've done with every other message that you've heard and think it's for somebody else and not for you. But not today. Not today. Wayside hearts, let's say today is my day. Today is my day. You will not be trapped in your past. You will not be trapped in what people have done and walking all over you. No more being trodden down. No more being wayside ground. And people like this need deliverance because that hardened heart has attracted some things to you. You're depressed all the time. You're not happy. You know it. You can act happy. You're confused. Don't know if you're coming or going. You wrestle with things. You wrestle with lust because the heart is lonely and needs love, so you got to find a substitute. Mm -hmm. So we watch love scenes, imagining ourselves in them love scenes, which turns into a lust scene, which attracts more demons. And you come to church, they kind of fly away a little bit, but you go right back into the same cycle. We know it's the truth because the heart wants to experience love. You can't live without it. God made you for love. God made you for love. He never made you to be walked on. God made you for love. And so your heart, even though it feels trapped, it's still longing and it is the longing that kills us. So Jesus comes to the woman at the well and says, I know you, you've been longing. I felt your longing. You've had five husbands. You've been longing. And I've come to give you water. He that hath ears to hear, let them hear. Father, let us hear. The second kind of ground, stony ground. Man, time waits for no one. Stony ground. This is the individual who hears it, receives it with joy, calls sister so-and-so, man, you should have been at the conference on my God. Girl, I took all these notes, and they'll never read the notes again, by the way. <laughs> we're laughing because that's been us. You know you have notes that you were all excited about. You haven't read in a year. Pastor Ranty was just hitting it one Sunday. You were like, whoa, Jesus. <laughs> Two weeks later. So they receive it with joy, but they have no roots. 
when tribulation arises because of the truth, they stumble. And it says it's stony ground. Here's the ground that's mixed with stones and dirt. And notice it didn't say rocks. You got to be very, very specific. Jesus is specific with the terms that he uses. He calls himself the rock of ages. Okay, so rocks and stones represent different things in scripture. Two things that stones represents, that's why he's calling it stony ground. The stone is mixed with some dirt, okay? That means that there's, no, there's enough dirt for you to plant the seed, but the, when the roots try to, to, to take root, it's running into stuff. It's running into stones. Two things stones represent in scripture. One, judgment. Judgment. In John chapter 8, verse 7, they, th they, they catch a woman in adultery by herself because they only brought the woman out we don't, by herself. So they bring the woman out and say, Jesus, uh, this woman was caught in adultery. And the word says, the Torah says that you gave to Moses that she should be put to death. And Jesus says, he who is among you that is without sin Cast the first stones represent judgment. I'm judging. Okay. The other thing that stones represent are people. Psalms 118. Verse 22 says that the stone which the builders rejected, who is that? Has become the chief cornerstone. And then he tells us in 1 Peter 2, 5, that we are being built up spiritual houses because we are living stones. So, the Bible says that the second group of people can't receive because they're stony ground, meaning they're judgmental people. You're sitting right here in the service. While the word is going forth, you're judging it. Mm -hmm. And you're thinking about uh, Shanene, who should have been here and not seen yourself. You know how we always think about our best friend? Man, she needs this. And we're not seeing ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> you did it a few minutes ago. Well, that's what the problem is with so-and-so. And so we're casting judgments. We're constantly judging. We're constantly judging, okay? Judgments also represent people you cannot forgive. You have an issue with letting people go. You have an issue with letting go of the offense. And because you stand in the place of judge, you cannot be forgiven. I just want you to know, you read Matthew 18. Matthew 18 will scare you if you have issues with forgiving people. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 18 that if you do not forgive those who offend you. Now, these are stony ground. This is stony ground. These are judgmental people. These are people that say, you know, I can't let that go. I can't believe so and so did that. And you're worshiping and everything, but you're still got that uh, in your heart. And God says, when I come, what I find is that uh, that's what I find. And in Matthew chapter 18, he tells us that if you don't forgive, your father in heaven will not forgive you. But not only that, read it. He says that the wolves and the dogs in the spirit realm, in the spirit realm, wolves and dogs in the spirit realm will be unleashed against you. Meaning that when you sin, if you forgive other people, now the blood of Jesus atones for your sin and stop the spirits that would touch you, sabotage you, torment you. Because the enemy always is looking. He's called the accuser of the brethren. He said, I have a right to make her depressed. I have a right to bring lust into her life. I have a legal right, legal right. And he shows his papers. Yes. What's the legal right? The accuser of the brethren comes before your God and says, they have ought. Yeah, yeah. Jesus says, you're right. 
steps out of the way. And now you're wondering, why am I wrestling with this? Why am I dealing with this? Why am I dealing with that? Stony hearts, judgment. And stony hearts also represent people who are afraid to stand up for the word because of people. You all cool in church. You get on campus, it's a different story. Situation. Now, I want you to understand something. Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it tells us that we must be transformed by, transformed by. So you're not necessarily transformed by an experience with God. Let's, let's get that out of the way, okay? Experiences are wonderful, but you're not necessarily transformed that way. You're transformed when your mind changes. Now, your mind is not the same as your brain. The brain is the organ that organizes all the faculties of the mind, all the functions of your mind. But your mind is a collection of voices. This is stony ground. Stay with me. Your mind is collection of voices. The voice of experience, your mother's voice, your father's voice, voice of spouses, siblings, Anybody you give significance to, their voice speaks in your mind. The voice of rejection, your own voice, I'm so stupid. Your own voice, I know I can do this. Maybe I'll try it out. Your mind is collection of voices. Now listen, when we engage, this is what Stony Ground does. Stony Ground hears the word and allows God's voice to be just one more voice in the pantheon of voices. So now it's God's voice, mom's voice. God's voice, the voice of my past. So God's voice is given the same level of significance as your own voice. And the voice of your pain. So you never change. You read your Bible over and over, you come to church for years, you never change because God's voice is reduced to the level of the voice of people. When you think, you think in thoughts. Those thoughts come from places, people, experiences. You are only transformed when you decide to raise God's voice and give it preeminence above all other voices. And you say, if you don't agree, if mom's voice, dad's voice, instructor's voice, friend's voice, whoever's voice does not agree with the voice, I silence it. The stony grounds here will hear the word, hear the voice, and be excited about what God is saying, but it has no significance. When you go out, everybody else's voice is going to have the same level of significance in your life. So Jesus will say, don't wear tight pants. Don't dress where they could see the sculpture of your body. That's not God. That's not virtuous, daughters of Sarah. But when you go out, culture is a voice. Culture say this is what's in. And we're talking about communion, wanting to go to know God more, right? If you want to know God more, it's going to cost you something. That's why everybody's average. Nobody wants to pay the price. Jesus is not begging you to pay the price. You know, they come to him and they say, Lord, I want to follow you. He said, count the cost. He's not going around saying, follow me, follow me, follow me. Count the cost, because if you're going to follow me, you're going to have to pick up your cross, and you're going to have to say goodbye to father, mother, sister, daughter, culture, world, everything, if you want to know me like that. 
if you want to know me like that. There are going to be other competing voices that's going to tell you, it don't take all that. You're being spooky spiritual. But those who want to come into the holy of holies and touch me and commune with me and deal with the power you were just talking about, where you walk on campus and the spirit of the Lord sets people free on campus and you lay hands and you see them recover. You don't have any other voices telling you what to do but God's voice. And young people, there are ones paying the price. You can pay the price. If we want to change our cities, it's on you. This is the generation. There was a generation, a generation before the Bible says that God called them, the children of Israel. He brought them out. He delivered them. They saw all the signs and wonders. But they weren't the generation to take the land. They weren't the warriors. They weren't the fighters. You are. What your mother and your father allowed, you will kill. You will destroy. The bondage you saw, you will destroy. But it takes people. It takes young people who are not just having church and singing kumbaya. It takes people who are saying, for Christ I live and for Christ I die. And you're willing to pay the cross. And you dress different. And you talk different. And you act different. And you watch the different stuff. You don't watch what everybody else watch. Because your eyes are gates. This whole body is alive. It's a temple and it has doors and windows. Access points, your ears right now is a gate. I'm entering, the Spirit of the Lord is entering into your life through your ears. The Spirit of the enemy will enter through your ears, the music you listen to, the people you listen to, your eye gates, what you watch, even touch who touches you, and what you touch, and then the body has memory. So even though you're not thinking it, your body remembers so you don't let yourself experience uh, experience stuff. You don't start kissing on somebody talking about, well, it's not sex. Because your body now remembers and wants more. And the next thing, and there goes our daughters of Sarah. Now we're daughters of fill in the blank. If you want to be free, you can. You just got to pay the price of full surrender. That's all. We just don't want it that bad. That's the truth. And Jesus said, right now, I'm going to speak life. But there are going to be people who are going to hold on to their pain, wayside ground. There are going to be people, though, other people, who are going to hold on to their judgments. And they're going to follow the other voices. And when it's time for them to take a stand for me, probably be about two people left. Wow, see, that was about three people, including your pastor, <laughs> who's already picked up her cross. Not in this house. Yeah. Gotta want him. But it's more than lip service. You got to live it every moment. You get up in the mirror, you look at yourself, you say, does this represent you? Or does it represent me? Which voice did I listen to when I got dressed? A sexual came to our church. When she walked into our church, we didn't know if she was a she or a he. We was like, what's that? We didn't know. Literally, we didn't know. You had to pick it up by the spirit. Okay, it's a she. Dressed like a guy, had facial hair, all kinds of stuff. Took this lady through deliverance. As she's getting delivered. I've never seen anything like it. Her complexion was... A few shades lighter than this. 
this speaker right here. Y'all see the speaker or whatever black you got on. Okay. As she's getting delivered, the shade, her, 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 her skin color is lightening up. Now, I'm a dark Nubian princess. She went from this to this to lighter than me. It was men's clothing. We gave her money to get some stuff. She wore that stuff until she could get more money. Because see, when you're delivered, when you're delivered, your body doesn't feel right in the old way you used to dress. The tights don't feel right anymore. Yeah. The slinky stuff don't feel right anymore. So that's stony ground. Thorny ground, last ground, besides good ground. Thorny ground, how much time do I have? Jesus, help Jesus. How many people grew up on Jackie McCullough? She used to say, help, Lord, help, help, help. That's what I feel right now, help, Lord. I'm trying, Jesus. Thorny ground. Thorny ground, cares of this world and the deceitfulness. Go back and watch Jackie McCullough. Cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the, world, the word and they become unfruitful. These people are tied to the world. Tied to the world. This is all about circumcision. This is what this is about. It's about your flesh and it's about what you want and it's about what this world can offer you. That's what this is about. I was doing a teaching a few, uh, a month or so ago on the Marvel movies that we watch. Boy, did I kick up some dust because we all love our Marvel movies. It's almost like Christians feel like we don't have nothing we could do. And so as soon as Marvel comes out with a new movie, it's the first girl you're going to see. You're going to see uh, Wonder Woman. You're going to see because we feel like that's all we get to do is maybe watch a Marvel movie. And so uh, I, I had a lot of people mad at me because we already don't get to do much, Pastor Tasha. But Marvel movies are of this world. Okay, and I'm just telling you because you asked me to tell you how to remove limitations from deeper communion with the Lord. That's the only reason why I'm telling you. So Marvel characters like Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman represent an ancient an ancient goddess, the goddess Diana that you'll find in Acts chapter 19. Over chapter, when you read Acts chapter 19, they were about to stone Judge Paul because he stepped in with an apostolic anointing into Asia Minor. He stepped in there and began to preach the gospel and that principality, that goddess Diana, that is represented by Wonder Woman, that's why her name is Diana, goddess of the Amazon, and there was a temple in Ephesus where he established a church. There was a temple there with prostitutes and everything. And he steps in and the principality feels the force of the kingdom. Does your campus feel the force of the kingdom? Does your city feel the force of the kingdom? Because you're here. So they felt the force of the kingdom because Paul stepped into Ephesus. And before he even got to preach anything, they began to plan to stone him. Because that principality was like, no, you're not bringing that Jesus thing here. But see, now we just made it into a movie. And we're eating popcorn while the same spirit is coming into your eye gate, neutralizing your spirit. And you wonder, I don't feel like worshiping. Why well, I don't want to go to church on Sunday. Why well, I don't feel like praying anymore. It is because Marvel is of the world and that same spirit. Ah. That same spirit, same thing with Black Panther. Black Panther, the way he gets his spirit is through necromancy, fellowship with dead spirits. And we are not supposed to touch any dead thing mixed with witchcraft. They give him the potion. His spirit goes into the realm of the 
the dead, talks to dead demons, dead spirits that take on the resemblance of family members, gives him a power. He comes back in that power, and now he is called Black Panther, and the church is eating popcorn and coming to church and say, girl, did you watch that movie? And then you wonder why in our service Jesus is not in the house, and the spirit of the Lord is grieved, and why you can't enter in if you want more. If you want more, you got to say, cut, circumcise me, remove the flesh, because everybody's going to say it's not that deep. It really is not that deep. It's not that deep. But when people ask me, Pastor Tasha, what you do to lay hands on people and get people delivered? I stay in his face. There is a place that you have to abide. This stuff doesn't come cheap. God asks you for everything. The enemy says, just give me a little bit. You, you can still go to church. You, you, can, you can still pray. You can still do all. You can, you can be on the praise. Team. Just give me a little bit. Jesus says, no, all or nothing. All or nothing. And the Bible says that those of us who have thorny hearts, it's like weeds. And the stuff that we're into chokes the life out. That spirit begins to choke the life out of you. It's competing with the spirit of God in you. You want God, you don't want God. You want to pray, you don't want to pray. You want to push, you don't want to push. You feel it, then you don't feel it. All of this stuff is because of mixture. Mixture, mixture. That's my alarm. And I'm going to stop right here. <laughs> I just need five minutes, Pastor Ranty. I'm almost done. So when we talk about thorny ground, thorny, we're talking about how you are in this world and we're supposed to be ambassadors of another kingdom. We're supposed to have our own culture, our own mindset. I don't know if you've ever seen a true foreigner, not one that's been raised in America, a true foreigner come to America for the first time. They don't speak the language. They're like, we don't do that in my country. In my country, we don't do that. In my country, we don't say that. In my country, they keep talking about their country. And what do we say? This America. <laughs> this America. But see, the thing is, this is, this is what we, the enemy keeps telling you. This is my territory. Because you, you, you have to be able to say, in the kingdom of God, we don't do that. In the kingdom of God, we don't watch that. In the kingdom of God, we don't touch that. In the, um, in the kingdom of God, we don't dress like that. We don't do that where I'm from. And the, de the devil's going to say, well, you're in my territory. And you have to let him know, I've come. I have come. I have come to take this ground back for my Christ. I have come to take it back. My house back. My school back. My community back. My city back. You think it's yours? I have been sent. You're not here just to be holy rollers. Who has time for that? We're not here just to be holy rollers. We are here because we carry kingdom. And the kingdom is power. The kingdom is might. And the Bible says that the generation that did not enter into the promised land, God says the younger ones. I'm going to do it with the younger ones. And when it was time for them to cross over, he said, hold up, Joshua, circumcise them. Circumcise them. Meaning there has to be agreement that the territory you're going into you're not going to touch none of their stuff. You understand, and there's a mark in you. There's a mark. Back then, it was the mark on your flesh. Now it's the mark on your heart. I'm in this secular school, but I'm not here to pick up any of your belief systems. I'm in a dysfunctional family, but mom, your rejection it's not going to filter into my heart. It's going to cost you something.
then he says there's good ground. That's the ground that we all want to be. And I want you to know that nobody, say nobody, nobody. is automatically good ground. You're not just born good ground. <laughs> I don't care if you didn't have trauma in your past. Because you have a sin nature, you don't automatically have good ground. The thing about good ground, though, people who have been good ground, most of the time, good ground, people have gone through stuff. They've been hurt. But they've allowed God to process that hurt. They've allowed God to heal that hurt. They've gotten God's mind on it. See, the thing is, every one of these grounds, he may be saying, this is the kind of ground you are, but you're not stuck. If the wayside ground that's hard would fall on their face and say, Lord, help me, deliver me, reach me. All I know is pain. All I know is hurt. That's all I know. I don't even know what to do with this word. And this, now she took my fun away. All you, every ground, every ground. The stony ground, Lord, give me the grace to silence all the other voices. I put too much emphasis on what my mom thought about me. More emphasis on that than what you say. What my father did or didn't do seems like it means more than what you have done and are doing. And that last ground, Father, help me to walk away from this world. It's enticing. It pulls. It draws. Rich young ruler goes to Jesus, says, Lord, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said, keep the commandments. Yeah, I have since I was a child. And I could see Jesus just pausing because he's about to take the Marvel movie away. And he said to the rich, young ruler, he's not just rich, he's not just young, he's a ruler. Give up everything in this world. Follow me. The Bible says he walked away sorrowful, just couldn't. That's what this is about. You go so far, and then you just couldn't do it. You go so far with God. Keep all the commandments. Honor your pastor. I'm going to keep my mouth shut. Put a guard over my mouth. I'm not going to have an attitude. I'm not going to watch crazy stuff. I'm not going to watch porn. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to pray every day. And Jesus says, I need this from you. Just couldn't do it. And Jesus let him walk away. He will let you walk away today. Fine and everything. I'm just saying, you know, because we make Jesus to be like this, this desperate. No, because he understands once you say yes, what it's going to cost you. And he needs a real yes. But you get in return. You get him. You get life. You get joy. You get peace. You get hope. How many wayside grounds do we have? People who have been hurt. And I know I'm wayside. How many wayside grounds? How many stony grounds, voices, judgments? Okay, see, y'all, look, this, this thing right here. <laughs> it's between me and Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> How many thorny ground, worldly stuff? And then there are people who feel like I'm all of them. 
I've been hurt, walked on. I got voices and I love stuff in the world. I'm just all messed up. <laughs> it's okay because he's able. He is able. He is able to make us good ground no matter how far you feel like you've fallen or where you are. So we're going to do some work. We're going to do some work. And you will not leave here the same unless you choose to leave here the same. Amen? Every single one of these grounds have to start out at the same place. Acknowledgement. Confession. Repentance. Every single one. Before freedom can come, there has to be an acknowledgement of who I am and where I am. God loves that. The Pharisee was praying and he was saying, Lord, I'm just glad that I'm not like the, the, the tax collectors. And I'm just glad I'm just, I don't have those issues. I'm just so glad. And then there's a Gentile at kneels and beats his chest. And back then, being a Gentile, we understand. The gospel had not even fully come to them yet. It came through Paul. The kingdom was open to Gentiles through Paul. But there's a Gentile, Jesus sees the Gentile praying, and the Gentile beats his chest and says, Lord, I'm not even worthy for you to even look upon me. And Jesus says, the Father heard his prayer over the Jew who has been keeping the law. There's something about humility, something about being broken, something about crying out to him that begins to break your chains. And we're going to do that. God only sets you free from your enemies, not your friends. So you have to verbally say, this is now my enemy, no longer my friend. Let's pray. Let's pray. And this is not the swaying type of prayer. You know the kind of prayers that we pray and we sway? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm -mm. This is the, you know, get in there. Get in the trenches. Let's do some work. Let's do some work. Jesus. This is what you were fasting for. This is what you were praying for. This is what you were seeking God for. Come on, let's do some work. Father, we humble ourselves. Lord, we seek you now. Lord, we ask for your grace. Lord, we ask for your mercy. Father, we repent. We repent. We repent. We repent. We ask for your forgiveness, oh Lord. We ask, oh God, that you would create in us clean hearts, Father. Lord, every place, the wayside grounds, we pray right now. Lord, every wayside ground, Lord, that has been literally living their life according to their pain, according to the God of pain and suffering. Lord, we repent for making our pain bigger than you. I don't hear you. Come on. Let there be a cry that comes out of this place that begins to break your chains. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek me and cry out to me. And I don't know how you do it here, but if you do, you do it here. Altars, come up front. Let's pray. Let's do this. Let's do this together. If my people who are home, who are called by my name, will cry out to me, will call out to me. Come on, let's pray. Oh, we need you. We need you. We need you. We need you. Let there be a cry that comes from our hearts. Come on, move his heart with your repentance. Move your heart. Move his heart with your cry. Father, I cry out to you. There can be no deliverance without repentance. There can be no freedom without renunciation. So, Lord, we come right now and we repent, oh, Lord, for everything that we've made.
made a God. We've made our pain a God. Our heart are the God. A betrayal our God. Our sufferings are God, oh Lord. They speak louder in our lives, oh Lord. We ask for your forgiveness. Come on. Talk to him like a friend that you hurt. Someone you offended. Don't do this casual. I'm sorry, Jesus. Please forget. Talk to him like somebody you offended. You died for me. And I ignored what you did for me. I repent. I repent for every other God that I've had before you. I repent for the voices. Come on, stony ground. For the judgments I've made. I repent. My mind's been locked. I've been angry. I've been frustrated. Oh, prenderable soya. Come on. No freedom without repentance. No freedom without a cry. This is not an automatic thing. Come on. I repent, oh God, for being excited about you. Excited about your word. And then I just go right back to doing the same thing. I've made your voice like every other voice in my mind. In the name of Jesus, I repent. I ask for your forgiveness. Come on, talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. Wayside grounds, fight. Push. Come on, the enemy, those vultures are trying to make you feel nothing and not push. Get your press back. Get your fight back. In the name of Jesus, it is you against you and you only have I sinned and does evil in your sight. We ask for your forgiveness. Come on, talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. Jesus, 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 Jesus. I've loved the world more than I've loved you. I've wanted the world more than I've wanted you. I've wanted my way more than I wanted your way. I come to church. I do all the right stuff, but my heart is far. Lord, I ask that you cleanse my heart. Create in me a clean heart. Renew within me a right spirit. Come on, these demons won't want to stay on you. Depression won't want to stay. Once you make that shift, once you turn around and you say, I'm not doing this anymore, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Brenda Labosaya. Come on, come on. Let your prayers rise. Let your prayers rise. Get his attention. Now, kill Labosaya. Oh, Jesus. I need you. I need you. Come on, come on. Just another minute. Come on, just another minute. He's breaking up hardened grounds. He's breaking up fallow ground. Come on. Jesus, I don't want to be here anymore. I'm not going to stay in this place anymore. I see him plowing up the ground of your heart. Feeling is returning. Hope is returning. Life is returning. We break up that crown in the name of Jesus. You have to do this part. Don't skip it. Come on, push. Come on, push. This is the most important part. You crying out to him. You crying out to him. It's the most important part. Not me laying hands on you. Come on. Oh, Jesus. 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 Oh, Brandelabas. Jesus. Come on. Come on. I need you. Come on, I need you. 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 Oh, some things are breaking. Some things are breaking. Come on, push. Come on, this is repentance. Come on, repent, repent, repent. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Cleanse me, forgive me. Oh, Brenda Labosoy and the Rabasi. Come on, come on. He's right here. He's right here. Jesus. Jesus. You're almost there. Come on. 
Aprendere bosso tuoi andare rabassi. Ronde le bosso tuoi andare. Rendere io solo mai andare bessi. Mighty God. Come on, come on. Don't whisper. Talk to him. Jesus. 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 Don't leave me this way. Lord, deliver my heart. Lord, plow the ground of my heart. Lord, cleanse my heart. Come on, talk to him. Come on, daughters of Sarah. Virtuous women. Know how to pray. Know how to press. Oh, my God. Come on, come on. You're getting your prayer life back. God's birthing some things. soye. Jesus. Oh, bro, Solamaya. One more minute right here. Come on. Push. Push. To your thing, Holy Spirit. Convict hearts. Convict hearts. Penetrate hearts. Stony ground. Silence voices. Wayside ground. Penetrate those hardened places. Give me a heart of flesh. Ask him. Jesus. We're in that holy place. He's right here. For a prayer closet, this is just you and him. It's just you and him. Talk to him about your heart. Talk to him about your heart. Depression doesn't go until you talk to him about your heart. Lust doesn't go until you talk to him about your heart. Fear doesn't go until you talk to him. Insecurity doesn't go. Talk to him. He wants to hear your voice. There's a cry in this place. There's a weeping in the house. There's a breaking in the house. Hardened ground is being broken. Hardened hearts are being broken. He's convicting you to bring you to a place of change. No conviction, no freedom. Come on. Rinderio sola bay and the repesi. Rinderebo sola bay. No corren de la basi and the repesi. Jesus. Talk to him. Come on. More, 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 more. Push more, more. Your heart has more stuff in it that needs to let go of. Come on, more, more. These quick five-minute prayers when you've been like this 15 years? Come on. More. I don't care. Let him dig out that filth. Let him dig out that fear. Come on. Talk to him. Press. Almost there. Come on. Come on. Come on. Jesus. Jesus. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Come on. Come on. Hora na la masse. Hora na le dio soye. Rana le dio so taye. Rana la bosso taye. Jesus, Jesus. Hora na le dio so la mai and the red de Jesus.
forgive. Come on. Let some people go. Let some people go. Come on. If you want freedom, this is where it starts. If you're still cold here, mm -mm. come on, push. Pass your feelings. Begin to call on his name from your heart. First one time I was going through such a difficult time. I was so depressed. I didn't know what to say. And all I prayed was Jesus. 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 Help me. Jesus. You think he won't hear you? Jesus. You think he'll ignore you? Jesus. Jesus. The breakthrough always comes in the crying out. Jesus. 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 We need you in this place. We need you in this place. Jesus. We don't need another prophet laying hands on us. We want you. We want you. We want your presence. We want your spirit. We want you. This meeting is about you. It's about growing closer to you. Jesus. Jesus. Let there be a desperation. I bind every spirit that steals your desperation. I bind every spirit that steals your cry. There's a cry in you that will shift you to your next place. Jesus. 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 Don't let us leave here the same. Jesus. Shift my heart. Remove the callousness, the coldness, the anger, the insecurity. Jesus. The fear. Jesus. Oh, God. Come on, put the focus back on him. The name of Jesus. 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 Do you know who you serve? If you knew who you serve, you would ask me. You would ask me. You would ask me. You would ask me for water. Ask me. Come on, come on, you're almost there. You're almost there. Some things are dying. Ah, no courtesy. We don't do this in church anymore. We don't do this in church anymore. So we think it's just laying on of hands, but there has to be a circumcision. It's happening right now. Rosokoya, you're letting some things go. You're walking away from some mindsets. Jesus. Come on, talk to him. Jesus. Jesus, 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 almost, 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 rondele bosso, la mai andare bessi, almost, come on, don't be afraid, you're safe, you're safe here, you're safe, you can feel, let the tears fall, stop keeping your composure, not kill him soya, Jesus, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Now he can work, he can work, no, he can work. He can work, he can work, he can work. The facades, you're walking away from the mass, the facades. You're letting the attitudes go. Come on. You stop trying to be strong before him. Let it go. Come on. Yes, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Now let's renounce some things. I renounce, I renounce. Renouncing is telling the devil, 
And whatever spirit that's been haggling over you to go, I don't need you anymore. I don't want you anymore. I renounce fear. I don't need you anymore. I refuse to be afraid. Insecurity. I refuse to be insecure. Proud and haughty. I refuse. Shyness. Or some of you wrestling with that. Lust. Insignificant. Feeling invisible. I renounce every spirit. Every other voice that argues with what God says about me. Come on, begin to say it. And we're gonna lay hands on you, but you gotta do this part. We're gonna pray, but you gotta do this part. Come on, you gotta do your part. Do your part. We can't do this part for you. Jesus. 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 What are you walking away from? What do you need to let go of? Tell them. Speak it out. Don't put it in your mind. Speak it out. I renounce hatred. I renounce unforgiveness. I renounce this judgmental attitude that I've had. I renounce it in the name of Jesus. Come on, 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 come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Jesus. Come on. Yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Oh, we need you. We need you. Come on. We're almost there. You are almost there. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Karandarabasia. Come on, don't rush him. Don't rush him. Jesus, Jesus. Almost, almost, almost. He rese le boko yandaye. Ho ronde ke le boso taye. Ronde ke le boso taye. Moko rinde le boso taye. Moko rinde le boso ye. Rese ke le moso taye ande rebesi. Shalamay ande rebesi. Jesus. It's freedom in the house. It's cleansing. Oh. Cleansing, 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 cleansing. He's washing. Oh, Jesus. Mm. Don't rush him. Don't rush him. Almost there. We are almost there. We are almost there. Don't be ashamed of anything because you're forgiven. Jesus, you're forgiven. You're forgiven. You're forgiven. Oh, we need you, we need you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Spirit of the living God. We ask that you would drive away every spirit in this place. Search them out, expose them. Where they're hiding, expose them. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, where they're crouching and they want to go home with us. In the name of Jesus, let the fire of heaven push them out to the surface. In the name of Jesus, that as we are praying, spirits of depression, spirits of rejection where you reject yourself you hate yourself you don't like yourself spirit of rejection leave now 
break off of the minds of God's people, leave their bodies, leave their temple. I command you to find your exit. Spirit of rejection, come out now. Come out now. Let them go now. Yep. Come on. Let them go. Let them go. Rejection. Lay hands on her. And you're not going to cause a scene. You are going to leave this place. You are going to leave this place. Spirit of rejection. I bind you and I command you to go. Come out of her now. Soya. Come on, see, when you do the work, it's easy. They won't want to stay. Come on, there's more of you with the spirit of rejection. You don't feel loved. You're lonely all the time. You're depressed all the time. Spirit of rejection, I break your hold. I command your hold to be broken in the name of Jesus. I command you to go. Leave them now. Leave them now. Oh, Rosolamaya. Rondelio Sokaya, Rondelio Sotaya, Rondelio Sotaya.